Let's turn now to the book of Leviticus and chapter 19. You might say, oh no, not Leviticus. <laughs> this whole telephone directory of strange rules and regulations about shellfish and mixed fibers and who can do this and who can't do this and clean versus unclean. It seems very confusing and it seems very irrelevant to the way that we live today. But right at the center of it is the absolute demand to be holy. In fact, you can argue very strongly that holiness is the central concept of the whole of the book of Leviticus. And it leads us into a conversation about what holiness is in real life that this is a practical thing, not a theological theory. It's a, a practical conversation about how to do life. So we have to get to grips with it. At the same time, we have to understand that Jesus repeatedly said things like, you have heard it said, but I say to you, that what we receive from the Old Testament has to be transmuted through like the light coming into Jesus and, and diffused through him. He becomes the prism of, through which we understand the Old Testament. So he received it, but he also transformed it. Everything, everything, the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament become the Ten Possibilities of the New Testament. If you are in Christ, then thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, if you are in Christ, or the old rules of the Sabbath become transmuted through Christ, the old laws of cleanliness and uncleanliness become, law becomes grace, really, but it's not quite as simple as that, it's, 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 it's almost as wonderful as that. Okay, so turn to Leviticus 19, let's do that right now, let me put it on the screen. And then we'll have a think about how that works for us. Okay, here we go. Here's how it starts. The Lord said to Moses. So right at the center, you have this sense of the word, the word, the Lord said to Moses. Okay. And we notice the word Lord, that very strong word from Exodus 3 the Lord God, Yahweh. And so he said, he speaks through his mediator and he said, speak, speak. So the word is being spoken, it's being declared. And then it says the entire, that means all of them together. But pause for a moment on this next word, which is the word assembly. And that's the Hebrew word, Kahal, which actually means call, called. It sounds like it, like the word kahal, call. It means called together, summoned, assembled, assembled, brought together. That's the Hebrew word. When it's translated into Greek, guess what it is? It's the word ecclesia, from which we get the New Testament word church, church. And if you read the Greek Old Testament, you'll see that word ecclesia right there. Church, speak to the church, speak to all the church. It means the community of the faithful. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And this is like the motto. It's like a stick of rock and it has something running through the center of it. This is the motto of the whole of the book of, of, of Leviticus. And you could argue the Bible in a sense. It says, be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Now, I know that's very familiar, but we need to go slow with it because it's very powerful too. You do this because I am this. You be holy because, so there's a cause and effect. There is a reflex response you do this because i am 
this. I am this. And remember the meaning of the Lord is I am that I am. It's the word Lord is assembled from the present tense of the verb to be. So you do this, you act this out because I am this. This is the very heart and nature, the internal functioning personality of who God is. You do this because I am this. Now, we have to stop thinking about this as a as a an effort that we have to assume just try harder guys I said no no you will do this because i am this and i am is with you and that's how the story of israel began it's the meaning of the word israel the one who strives with god and a prince with god also means strive with god is rael el meaning the old generic word for god god moving through us and in us like a hand slipping into the glove and the glove becomes powerful and dexterous because god is in them we shall not be moved okay god is operating through his people and they are the community of the faithful. And the word faithful just means the same as the word for loyal, consistent, sticking with the program, going for it. You be holy because I am holy. So the first thing about the life of holiness it is that it is relational. It is entirely relational from beginning to end. It is nothing to do with our performance that is the fundamental error of the pharisees and it runs very strongly in the in the modern evangelical church in fact there's a rather cruel saying which i'm going to repeat <laughs> and it is scratch an evangelical and find a pharisee <gasps> Now, of course, you and I, we're not like that. No. <laughs> but it's just worth saying that point, even if it just it, it, it irritates me slightly. But it's worth saying it just to make that point, that Corrie ten Boom quote. I'm just a glove until I'm filled with the spirit of God. And then I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is God in us. That is our holiness, not us attempting something, gritting our teeth and trying really hard to be nice when all inside we're not. We're mean and suspicious and critical. Says, no, 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 it is. We're looking at it in the wrong way. OK, now much is expected of us, of course, but much is given to us, of course. OK, so this is a key concept in the in the book of uh, Leviticus. And here it is. His, here it comes in, in Leviticus 19. Speak to all the congregation, all the church of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Now, don't take that shall as being a angry headmaster telling his students to obey the rules. Take it as a father loving his children and declaring a promise to them. You shall be. You shall be. You are Peter. You, you are Simon. You will be Peter. You are here and you will be there. I'm going to take you on a journey. It's the journey of holiness. I'm going to be with you. You are all you have to do is be the community of the faithful. I will be with you. The battle belongs to the Lord. I am in you. I am upon you. Wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with the spirit from on high. You shall be my witnesses. It doesn't mean if you try very hard. It means it's the nature of who you are. Just tell the truth. Just say exactly what's happened to you. You know what John Wesley said one time? Wonderfully wise word. He said, don't, don't give this any particular name. Don't call it the having attained 
or the being baptized in the Holy Spirit, or the being entirely sanctified, or the being made perfect. Rather speak of the particulars wherewith God has dealt with you. Isn't that wonderful? And he meant very, very practical things like, how is your temper, sir? Are you still bad tempered? Are you still critical and fault finding? And of course, that takes you right back to where Leviticus 19 begins. This is what holiness looks like. So now we've looked at the empowering mechanism of holiness that it is God in you. And now we look to how, how you are, how, how you shall be holy. The strange thing is that this motto, be holy, comes right in the middle of the most arcane list of, of strange stuff, a, a lengthy discussion about clean and unclean foods and other matters which seem totally irrelevant to the way that we live. And to be truthful, uh, they are, they, they are irrelevant, they are. Uh, but we're speaking about spiritual truth. And so these become a parable of how we understand that spiritual truth. How, how do you talk about spiritual things? You have to use metaphor, you have to use parable, you have to use linguistic techniques that take us past the rules into the relationship. Otherwise, you just get these ridiculous conversations about, shall I have a tattoo or not? Should I wear a shirt with mixed fibers? So now this shirt has mixed fibers. <laughs> so, so I am contravening Leviticus 19, okay? But, but it, that's just a legalism. That's not the point here. So what is the point? Okay, well, it's, uh, this is uh, Dunning wrote, wrote this. He's saying we have to go deeper. The distinction here, I'm just going to quote from Dunning here. The distinction between clean and unclean animals was to remind Israel that God distinguished them from other nations, his own possession. It implied that holiness is separation from the unclean to the holy God. Okay, and, and, and what is happening in these rules and regulations it's, it's like the um, health and safety manual in an in a factory do you know do you ever work in a factory and you see one of those big signs that's put on the wall that in very very small print that nobody reads it's rather similar to the book of the meticulous you know they're saying the health and safety regulations their hygiene uh, rules and thoughts but behind them Behind them is something valuable, it's, it's uh, safety. And the safety is expressed through clean and unclean animals, how to live, how to, how to act and, and be. But behind them is the foundational principle of holiness itself. And that holiness is based upon one thing, and that is, well, let me show you. Let's just get back to the text once more. That is the character of God. Okay, look at this. Look, every time he comes back to that, you must do this, respect your father and mother. And then it just says simply, I am the Lord your God. And in Hebrew, that is, I am the I am that I am your God, your, your God. Don't do this. I am the Lord your God. When you do the sacrifice, da, da, da. when you reap the harvest, don't glean to the edges, don't reap to the edges or ga gather the gleanings, leave them for the poor and foreigner. I am the Lord your God. It goes on down. Don't do this, don't do this, don't swear. It's like the Ten Commandments really in a way. But then there's this element of compassion, this looking out of the corner of your eye, there's being careful for the homeless, for unjust situations, for, the, for poor people generally. Don't hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. Why not? Because he's living hand to mouth. Because just because you're rich, don't exploit the poverty of another. Don't curse the deaf. Don't put a stumbling block in front of the blind. 
don't take that in a legalistic way take it in a, a almost an emotional way how dare you be cruel to people with disabilities how dare you mock the disabled he says why fear your god i am the lord i am the i am that i am that means god is powerfully present god is god's character is before you do you remember david repenting of his sin with Bathsheba and saying my sin is ever before me well it was ever before him because God was ever before him his awareness of God was real and powerful and it and present I am so don't pervert justice don't show partiality look at this to the poor or to the great it's don't don't be partial don't be overboard to the poor and neither be overboard with your courtesy to the great just be straight just be clean just be who you are in me judge your neighbor fairly that means evenly in a balanced way don't go about spreading slander don't do anything that endangers your neighbor's life why not i am the lord don't hate a fellow israelite in your heart okay rebuke them frankly <laughs> be straightforward even in your criticism that there's nothing wrong with an argument you know paul said speak the truth in love in love keep my decrees don't mate different kinds of animals don't plant your field with two different kinds of seed you sort of think what on earth has that got to do with me we have to go to take this as a metaphor take the here it is here's my shirt don't wear clothing woven with two kinds of material be straightforward be clean be whole have integrity have your eye open for the disadvantaged but don't let their needs bully you any more than you should let the needs of the rich bully you just you be my community of the faithful so again and again it has this little chorus at the end i am the lord your god it's a statement that god is with us the statement that god is continually with us that we are to live in in relationship and not be drawn aside so this is not a legalism it's a it's a relationship so 15 times we have this reminder i am the lord your god i am yahweh i am with you the community of the faithful is to live in imitation of god this is martin buber the imitation of god not a mediator in a human form but god himself that he said is the central paradox of judaism and what does that mean to us well i come back to what we said before to be holy is to be jesus is to allow the presence of jesus of christ into our lives into our community remember we're all in it together think of that picture of a triangle and here we are at the base of the triangle and Jesus is at the top and the nearer we we stream towards Jesus the nearer we get to each other and once we are in Christ we are in each other we are in this together guys we're in this together and and I need your I, I need your strengths you need my strengths and I cover for your weaknesses and you cover for my weaknesses we we come in our imperfection in fact our gift to God is our imperfection it is not it is never our ability to keep the rules better than than our neighbor it is not in our comparison it is in our community it is not in our criticism it is in our love and we cover for one another bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ is that galatians 6 check me out see if i'm right so galatians 6 is lovely isn't it because it says 
restore such a one gently if you break if you fall away if sin trips you up restore such a one gently bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ lord we pray today that you may lead us forward as we begin to understand the holiness that you call us into that it is a mutual community thing that it is not individual performance but it's based upon your presence with us upon your character in us upon our journey as a church together in jesus name we pray and all god's people said amen may god bless you Thank you.